warm welcome to everyone. You're watching Ren 11 Live. I'm Sean and I am actually located in my 996. I thought, do you know what? It's kind of sat in the garage right now doing nothing. So I may as well do something to uh, use it at least. And it's a great set, you know. I've got nice comfortable pews. I've got a, a great view here of a steering wheel with a tripod attached to it and my actual... Um, <laughs> my actual phone but it works pretty well right so without much further ado i'm going to be looking after david lane today david lane today david lane is a gentleman who uh looks up or did i say look after runs workshop 77 hey man how you doing good buddy good how are you not too bad not too bad thank you very much i need to adjust this because all you can see is like my nose and it's a massive nose so let me Dude, change that a little bit and just hipster beard <laughs> it's the beard yeah I'm, I'm running you know I've, I've got craft cider so i'm a proper hipster i suppose you know <laughs> how you doing david how's things yeah i'm mate? good i'm good sean how are you bud i'm not too bad man i'm not too bad at all i am right. so stoked that i'm finally even though you're not far from me getting an opportunity to have a look around your wonderful workshop because that place every time i look at pictures i just think that place is amazing and i'm terrible for not venturing over to you over in weedon so I'm yeah, sorry. No, no. <laughs> Everybody's busy. We, we understand. I hope it's not too echoey. And, um, and I'm under strict instructions. No swearing and no death threats today. So uh, I think <laughs> like Oh, Jesus. I'm going to have to uh, watch my language as well then, man. Um, don't worry, man. You're fine. Uh, it's, it's 8 o'clock. <laughs> it's, it's, it's 8 o'clock, man. Kids are in bed. My, my kid's in bed, so we're all good. Ah, quality. Okay, so people uh, uh, may not know one of your business they may know all of the businesses because it's not just uh, workshop 77 you also osha design uh osha yep. porsche uh, and bag bends uk um you are a man with many businesses of many talents how yeah. did you find yourself here you know first of all well let me clear those messages that i seem to be getting um uh well I, I mean the osha thing actually started out before before workshop 77 kicked off um that was that was something that i was just sort of toying around with while i was building the first car the beige 911 and um and i thought if something came of it it would be nice to have already had something sort of there instead of trying to retrofit a business around a car that had already been built and designed and um and it mm. was it was just something that we were playing with i mean the whole thing was just something that we were essentially playing with including workshop 77 um so um so you know that was uh that was that was something that just kind of fell into place um the osha design has now subsequently become a bit of a design principle within workshop 77 we're all workshop 77 but the, the bag ben stuff that's that's all dan uh dan ridding um and and he started that and he started that years ago and, and he's he's pretty uh notorious i think um for bag bends and uh he he, he created the group um, and it's, it's, I suppose it's more than just a group, it's a community, but it's also a way of building cars and building their, their, uh, their Mercs to a certain classic Mercs generally, but to a certain spec. Um, so the, the builds have to be done a certain way, a certain principle. Uh, they have to work well and, um, and they have to look good. So, yeah, the, uh, so, they so look that, amazing. That's what the bag bends thing is. And that, and that all, you know, Usher design, some of our cars are Usher, Usher cars, some of the cars are bag bends cars, but they're all in Workshop 77. Cool. So it's almost like a, a conglomerate of, of different um, businesses all wrapped up into one now? Yeah, uh, I mean, I suppose, that, I suppose you know, I, I think maybe businesses for, for some of them, you know, for Osha and Bag Benz is, uh, is, is perhaps too formal, whereas some of it's a bit more of a community, but it is, it's a design principle for us is what we know. You know, when Dan, and Dan is, is, is world famous for his Bag Benz stuff, um, and, uh, and he helps a lot of people with, with advice and, and input, um, and design on some of the cars uh, with um, with um, OCD as well, Matt up at OCD. Um, you oh, know, only charge dubs. Yes, yeah. yeah, so, yeah. Uh, so Dan is working a little bit with with OCD and with Matt and, and some of his the, the the he designed on some of the uh, the wishbones and the struts and various things come from or a, a collaboration really, I suppose, between the two of them. So um, yeah. So as a business, I mean, to call it a business, I suppose, yeah, perhaps slightly formal but uh, but the business the workshop is workshop 77 is the business um and then everything else are sort of little branded type offshoots from there i suppose a bit like paul stevens with his um with his uh what does he call it auto art auto art yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, certain cars built with a no cost compromise really and um that's not quite what we do but but there's a bit of that i suppose 
saying that though, you know, you look at zero two, and I remember seeing zero two uh, a long time ago at Vista Heritage, and just yeah. thinking to myself, that is. I, I remember people were surrounding it as well, where it was barked up. Oh yeah. Was it was it a Lufka cult? I think it was Luft GB, wasn't it? Okay, well, there wouldn't have been tons of people there, man, with that bloody weather. But, yeah, it was, yeah, it was terrible. But there was still yeah. a number of people around that. And and I just remember thinking, this car is just so right. It, it looks, for, for me, when I when I was looking at Zero Two, and when I put this up onto YouTube, uh, I'll, I'll make sure I have pictures of it on there as well. It, it looks like a design sketch come to life, literally come to life. That's one of the things that took... Uh, I took away from the vehicle. It looked stunning. You know, oh, yeah. how everything's slightly oversized. It's a bit more, you know, design led. And then suddenly when it comes to fruition, it's normally, well, who replaced the, the, the 18s with like, like 13 inch wheels? What the hell's happened here? But yeah, zero two was just stunning. It really did oh, blow my mind. That's, 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 that's kind of you to say. I mean, that, that whole car was primarily, um, was, was function over form. Um, the reason for the really wide arches is because it's got 993 multi-link rear suspension in there, which is significantly wider than the 1970 body shell that the, uh, that this, the suspension went into. So, so the wide arches had to be there to accommodate the, the fact that it was such, so, was so much wider across the rear subframe. Um, uh, I, I suppose there, there were a couple of bits and there were a couple of elements on there that I wanted to do that was, uh, that was more about the aesthetics than about the, um, you know, more about the, the form than the function. Things like the rain gutter delete, which was actually quite difficult to do. It's a, it's a difficult concept. It's a difficult thing to do to a car. Mm -hmm. um, doesn't work very easily because you're talking about three pieces of the steel that come in and get rolled and formed and then beaded. And that gives it an incredible amount of strength. And when you, when you cut that off, it's not just a case of being able to cut off and then just putting a seam weld across there because otherwise everything just boing pops right up yeah so, um, so yeah i mean that you know that took a bit of engineering that was just an idea that, 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 that we sort of had and then and then it came about and turned out to be quite a difficult thing but um but a lot of it uh, you know the rear seats have been deleted because um there's a g50 gearbox in there um and the engine's ever so slightly further forward as well so so the gearbox actually ended up protruding inside the cabin and uh, it was just easier to lose the rear seats as a result um, so yeah, a couple of little things like that, but, um, yeah, no, it, it, it was, it was a, a bunch of concepts, a bunch of ideas that I put together for this car. Um, and it, it kind of grew organically. Um, it wasn't, it wasn't designed uh, in one and done and then ready to roll. It was, uh, it, it took a lot longer to sort of come, come about. And, and I had, I mean, I suppose everybody, if they're building one of these cars, looks at Singer for a bit of inspiration. Mm. And, uh, and I was looking at the Singers thinking that they were the Holy Grail and absolutely the epitome of everything I wanted style-wise. And then as, as months and even years progressed um, on the build, I suddenly realized, well, actually, I didn't necessarily want to be copying Singer. Um, there were certain things. Their, their spinny back leather, for me, was just like the coolest thing, that square weave leather when they were coming out with the multicolored stuff. Mm. Terribly expensive. It's about a thousand dollars a square meter. Um, so yeah, bloody expensive stuff. And I thought, well, this is it. I, you know, I've got to have it. Singer have got it, and it's cool. But I, I think in the Singer cars, it probably works. But I think is some of it being so multicolored, and it, it's it's a bit too much. It, I I don't know if it'll stand the time of becoming a classic material um, for other 911s. It will be for Singer, no doubt. But um, but for other cars, I think it could just be seen as being perhaps a a, a, a copy. Um, mm. what singer have tried to do so so i sort of steered clear from that and we did something slightly different and um anyway yeah yeah it's, it's a nice car and for me it's all about the driving it's um it has to drive nicely and that car does so, D uh, dare i say though you know going back onto the the, the it may be looked as a copy aren't mm -hmm. most backdates homages to the great 911s of yesteryear i mean i still have yet to see someone back there in 993 to something like from the 80s or anything like that just yet yeah. everything seems to go further back into the 70s and we really focus on the the like the long noses the narrow bodied style um, or we yeah. move on to the rsr like uh yaz's uh car as well yeah 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 he's, he's 74 yeah, yeah yeah no i'd say it probably is i'd say it probably is um you know i think I, I, and the reason we all go back there and, and all look for pre-74 cars generally look for a pre-74 car long bonnet minor one um I suppose they look cool. Uh, they're not terribly safe. You know, there's, there's <laughs> the safety element. You die like a man in one of those things is what somebody kept telling me when I was talking about my car and how unsafe it would be. And he said, just Dave, die like a man. So, um, so, you know, there's, <laughs> so um, but, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. Is, is it fashion that we keep going back to the pre-74s? Um, is that why we sort of backdate these things or some people tend to backdate these? I don't, I don't know. But, um, but for me, it is the pure car. 
uh, I know the pure pure risk car would be the short wheelbase up until sixty or the end of sixty eight. But um, okay. but um, but uh, yeah, yeah, everybody does. Uh, there there have been a few nine nine three back dates. Carga does one. Um, Homer in uh, in Poland does one. Yeah. Um, oh, he's looking for a million quid for his million euros, I think, for one of his back dates, which uh, which a lot of money. Yeah, yeah, I see. But, uh, yeah, anyway, so. <laughs> quite quite a, a, a high price. So let, let's go backwards a little bit. Okay. What got you into Porsches in the first place? I mean, you know, this it's, it's still fairly new uh, in its infancy, dare I say. It's only like two or three years old, uh, Osher design, isn't it? Um, okay. So where did it all come from? Where did it start? Well, I I, um, I I give the credit to uh, to a chap called Adam Hawley from Theon Design. When I originally saw his car, I went to the Festival of Speed, um, and he had just finished building his first sort of prototype. Um, well, it had just been finished built, and um, and uh, it was for sale in the car park. And I had a couple of fast cars, and I wanted to get rid of those because I just thought there was nothing particularly cool about them. And saw his and his, and it, and it was it was a it's, it's a 964 back date. It looks very similar to the New York uh, Commission, um, the the first New York one commission of uh, Singer. Singer, yeah. And uh, and I thought, man, that is badass. That's a that's a cool looking car. And uh, I gave him a call. Turned out it was about seventy grand more than I could possibly even think about trying to trying to get together. And uh, so I thought, well, what the hell? Let me try and build one. Um, and then just jumped onto eBay and started searching around and, and then found a car that Hugh was selling, which was the 901, 1979-01. And it had been built as a bit of a copy to, uh, to uh, um, Jack Olson's Black, Black Beauty. Oh, yeah. Wicked so, car. Uh, yeah. So, um, so I bought that and, uh, and thought, well, because I've been project managing a number of things, I've always liked design. Um, well, I've, been, I've been refurbing old houses. Uh, we've been buying these things and project managing that and, and being a little bit hands-on. But for me, the best part about those houses was always designing the kitchens or the, or the, uh, the, the, the flow through the house. And, uh, and that's the bit I've always thoroughly enjoyed. So, um, so I just sort of put that into the cars. And uh, I've, I've been involved with cars on and off all my life. We've, as kids, we were restoring cars with the old man. First car we ever restored together was a, a Willie CJ2A um, for the farm. So, and that's what I learned to drive on. Uh, <laughs> Wicked. With, a, with a bloody awful Essex V6 3 liter motor in this thing and uh, three speed gearbox left hand drive, terrible. But um, <laughs> Enzo yeah, Ferrari so did say that was the greatest sports car that uh, America ever made, though. So, you oh, know, right? yeah, apparently so. <laughs> that was, I don't know if it was condescending or praise, you can read really tell. Uh, yeah, it's a yeah. Sarky, sarky fellow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I imagine yeah. it's not a great. Well, look, look, it was great for the farm. Um, you know, we we have a game farm up in Botswana, and uh, the highest speed you could ever get to was about thirty-five miles an hour, I suppose, on those roads. So actually, perfect for that. But um, yeah, so so we've always been involved with that because we did another couple of uh, uh, series two A Land Rovers, um, which we still have one of on the farm. And uh, and then I had a bike shop, and I used to race a lot of motocross in South Africa, and I started the bike shop with uh, with with, a, with my mechanic at the time, and. Um, and we enjoy that, just uh, servicing two-stroke bikes and racing them and uh, buggering around. Um, and that's what I suppose, you know, in the back of my mind, and, and uh, was always that I'd love to, I'd love to do this for for a living. Um, found myself in a unique position where I had sold my business about, well, geez, nearly ten years ago now. Crumbs. Anyway, and uh, <laughs> yeah, I was thirty-five. So um, anyway, sold the business and um, and and needed something to do. Uh, I'd taken a couple of years out after eight years of IVF and eight rounds of IVF. We finally had a little boy. So I took a year off with my wife. And, Congratulations. Um, yeah, thanks, man. He nearly killed us um, <laughs> a number of times. And uh, anyway, so, so at, the end of, at the end of a year at home, I thought, man, I've got to do something because this is, uh, is going to kill me I'm trying to stay awake with this kid. I need some way to escape to. So, um, so we just, um, Rob and I started uh, Workshop 77 together um, because he was working in advanced motorsport then. Um, and uh, they decided, Dan, Dan Turner had decided to make a couple of changes and was getting rid of everybody out of the workshop. And um, I said to Rob, why don't we open up next door? And uh, so we literally walked 20 meters from the door where he was working down at the Ordnance Depot, um, struck up a deal with, uh, with Ross at the garage and uh, he let us stay there. And I thought, well, let's see how we go. We can do, we can do three months and, uh, and if we survive three months, then we're cool. And um, Three months became six months, and then six months, and now, now we're <laughs> over two years. So, uh, so yeah, so it's going nicely, I suppose. No, oh, definitely. You know, you can see that in in the growth. You can see that in the the cars you've got and the clientele that you seem to reach. You know, there's a lot of people that have uh, you have a fan base 
not just in the UK, but, uh, you know, uh, abroad as well. And then you consider that I saw that photo of you with uh, the Kaiser and uh, Larry Chen over at Bister as well, which was uh, pretty cool, you know. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, man, he just happened to walk past and I like, grabbed him and said, let's get a photo, you know. So uh, that's the problem with this. It's a lot of bullshit, man. There's a lot of lying. There's a lot of bullshit. <laughs> yeah, that's... we're not exactly best mates. I don't ex- I, Although I do have his phone number. I don't, you know, ah, see, Larry come on. Hey, man, Larry. It brings people um, together, man. It brings people you. together. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, you mentioned about uh, when you were renovating houses and, and mm. the things that kind of grabbed you with the uh, doing the kitchens or, you know, the entrance uh, ways into the property. And everyone says that the kitchen is the heart of the home. Oh, yeah. What would you say on a 911 build is the heart of the build then? I suppose what, it's, got like, to be the engine. it's got to be the engine surely you know um uh, i mean it's uh, it's uh yeah well is it is it the body and the shape or, or is it that engine i, I suppose the engine the, the shape is iconic and uh, and instantly recognizable and and i've had this discussion with a number of people before when i said is there a more iconic shape than a 911 and shit you don't want to do that man you get abuse from bloody land rover owners and mini owners <laughs> and all sorts but um but i think you know it's got to be up there it's got to be top three or top five in the world of most iconic car shapes e-type jack those guys bash me the hardest actually um so um you know that so, car's uh, lasted five minutes you know yeah, the 911 has yeah. been around for over 50 years yeah, exactly. almost 60 years so no contest exactly. <laughs> exactly. that's my argument so um so yeah is it the body or is it the engine but for me i think it's got, probably got to be the engine you know i am um, um i uh, i said to dan the other day we took we've got a little sl uh, an r107 and i took it home the other day because the e24 which is my daily had packed up the um, the uh, fuel pump had gone Oof. and um and this thing went up the road and i'm only a mile and a half from the workshop so that's kind of handy but it was it was a spluttery shitty ride up there and um and and then again in the morning a spluttery shitty ride and i was crapping myself checking <laughs> the rearview mirror waiting for a truck to come and mow me over as i as i struggled to get to 25 miles an hour coming down the a5 and um and i i realized you know for me uh, i'd rather be driving a rusty piece of crap as long as it's reliable and and and, and works properly um than drive something that's all show and uh, and uh, shit underneath and um so um so yeah so for me a 911 uh, a good engine on a 911 is, is fantastic those air cooled 911s are my, my particular favorite um and um and they're fantastic and they sound pretty distinctive and uh, and i thought i thought i'd be a ferrari boy i grew up loving ferraris when i was a kid i had all the ferrari posters on my wall but i didn't turn into a ferrari guy you know there's a uh, to my mind in my opinion there are certain sort of there are certain people that are ferrari people and there are certain <laughs> people that aren't, i'm not i'm not a, I'm not a lambo guy i'm not a ferrari guy uh, that's interesting. That's probably the, the safest sort of answer I could imagine you'd ever give about uh, what a Ferrari person is or a Lamborghini person is. But fair play, man. You really no, are no, being no, good no. tonight. <laughs> no, no. Those classic Ferraris I love. I'd love one. I'd love to have the money to be able to buy one. But I don't, you know, I, thinking about it, I don't think I'd enjoy it as much as, uh, as, as I would perhaps my car. Um, I saw a 250 um california spider the other day that was being painted and um it was only being painted locally and and i had a good look around this thing and the, and the engineering on it was bloody awful and um he wasn't allowed to sort of rectify anything uh because it would it would cause havoc with the classic certificates etc and um and the car can't really be used unless you've got tons of cash or you've inherited this thing from you know three generations of bloody grandparents etc so um so i think i think if you've if you've had to buy the car and work for it and and unless you've got billions in the bank i don't think you'd ever use it the way i would want to use the car i would always be shitting myself and hit a pothole or or put three extra miles on the clock that i shouldn't have put on there you know uh, ferris bueller's day off classic isn't it but yeah. um <laughs> you know poor old cameron's old man could never use that damn car so uh awful yeah, yeah, true. Um, do you still feel, I mean, I think it's it's kind of agreed, and I had this conversation with Dan Fur, the editor of GT Porsche magazine, uh, the yeah. other day, but the the 911 is, is pretty much the attainable supercar for the every man, you know, so, yeah. and it's one of those that if you do break it, it's kind of, it is costly these days, you know, with certain things, but parts are readily available, it's a lot cheaper. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, it is. It is. I don't know if I'd put it in the supercar bracket at all. I mean, they're fast. They're not super fast. I've, I've had a couple of supercars and they are incredibly quick. Um, you let go of the steering wheel with one hand to change gear and you fly across the car when you're going around a curve. And then that's when you suddenly realize why F1 style PDK boxes, etc. are so are so good. Um, but um, 
but um yeah i would um i would agree to that uh you know there's a lot of us out there a lot of porsches out there um so what over a million 911s i mean they probably must be tipping 1.2 or 1. Point, you know probably about there now because a Can million imagine... years ago so well, yeah um, so many of them are still on the road which is so cool you know that, that, that's what i like i'm sure that there's a percentage i don't know if i heard it i think it was on Overcrest, um, and I think Chris Clue was actually on. He was watching this when it started, so hopefully he's still on. Um, and yeah. I remember him saying that there was apparently a number of 911s or Porsches on the road. The percentage is around the 75, 80% I thought of it was about Porsche 82 or so. Yeah, I thought it was something like that as well. Yeah. And it's like, you Which know, is, you think... It's amazing. Over a million oh. cars made, and still, it's still 80% of them still on the road going back to 1964 or oh, i don't even know if that includes does that include the uh, the three five sixes so oh you know, i wouldn't be surprised because there's still quite a few of them uh but yeah. but there you go and you consider how many ferraris are still on the road and it'll be great to see them on the road don't get me wrong i'm, I'm a car fan like like most people who, yeah on there but but at the same time you'd you'd be more inclined to see more porsches on the road is that a testament to bill quality is that a testament to the ownership and and what owners are willing to do oh well having done more than because we don't just do porsches i mean i know you're concentrating on the porsche stuff and for me that is my passion and and not just porsches but i suppose 911s and not just 911s but early 911s pre-1974 911s if i'm being very specific but um but uh, you know looking around we got a, we got a jag, jag mark 4 on the ramp what a pain in the ass um the parts to find for it difficult uh, you know absolutely problematic we've got uh yeah just a little red flash over my shoulder we've got ollie's um 105 gtv uh, mm. and the number of parts that are on there um the number of places i've had to try and ring around and you know uh ian ellis I've, I've been on the phone to him a number of times looking for a tiny little stainless steel clip that fits on the back window on the back quarter and the little corner thing and one of the little hinges and they arrive and they're second hand and they're in shit condition and they're off to the chromers and the chrome is struggling to replate them because they're just so abused and buggered up um and then and then anything for for this 911 t i've got next to me here you know anything we need on it any of the seals i need i phone up four or five different suppliers that i could ring um i can quote the part number because i've got all the diagrams and uh two days later next day sometimes it's here um and i've got a choice i can go oem or i can go aftermarkets ID and uh, and save myself a few bucks as well so you know the, the choice is there that makes things significantly easier to uh, to build i suppose it gives us quite a um an opportunity now as you were mentioning uh, the cars in the background to actually have a gander around the workshop and are you yeah. sat at the desk where you you know those pictures are taken where you've got this wonderful <laughs> yeah, <my> leather sofa <laughs> and then just cars you're like holy shit this is the best office in the world ever yeah yeah, yeah. but instagram lies again in summer lovely winter eh, not so much you know <laughs> it, uh, it takes a strong man and i'm a tropical bird so uh, so it can't be a tad chilly in these big old buildings Can the imagine. Bodonic buildings so they're from 1806 um, is when they started building them. Um, and, are they? Um, are they? Re not, what's the word? Not registered. I keep on forgetting the um, listed. Yes. Listed. Listed yeah, building yeah, very as well. Much so. yeah, very oh. much so. Yeah, yeah. All site is listed. So difficult, difficult to deal with. Difficult to make improvements on. But we just have. I mean, the, the space is incredible. Um, it, it's cool to work in here. We we have to try and make it a cool place to be in, and uh, we have to try and have some fun, and we have fun with the cars. And um, and it's not particularly a commercial venture. That's not what it's about. Um, for me, if it washes its face, then then we're okay, and uh, and that's what I try and do with it. But um, but first and foremost, it's got to be fun. Um, and I have for the last two years enjoyed coming to work. Um, you know, I can come in here on a Saturday, and uh, and Dan will be in, and I go, "What the hell are you doing?" And he goes, "Well, I just thought I'd come down and work on one of his cars, or work on something else, or do do something." And um, and uh, that's kind of what we do. You know, it's um, it, it's good fun. Um, previously, if somebody was unloading a bloody racing car or, or a sports car or for trailer or something i sort of try and try and muscle in on the on the conversation slowly you know you sort of wander across the road if your neighbor was doing it you'd walk across the road and go hey bob you know what are you doing <laughs> and um and now i don't have to do that because chances are they're unloading it here and uh, and i have to be involved with it in some way so it's kind of cool man i enjoy that it really is good fun People are coming there to see you specifically. Well, the, the site to see you guys uh, without anyone yeah, else. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, you know, but I mean, the cars, the cars that are coming into our lives are coming here because they're coming into our lives. It's not, yeah. it's not me trying to muscle in on somebody else's action or seeing a cool car yeah. in the car park and going, "Hey, Frankie, what's that?" You know. So uh, that's kind of cool. That's what I enjoy. What do you think has driven that business or, or people to 
to want to come to you. You know, there's people that come from, from far and wide. You know, yes, uh, for, for instance, I know you hooked him up with the wheels and his wheels look fucking amazing on, the, on, his, <laughs> on his back yeah, date, man. Pretty, he, he, look, he gave me all the specs on those wheels. All I did was, was place the order. So uh, that was all his doing with the ETs and stuff. He still chose you, though. And, and that's the thing. What, what inspires people to want to come to see you? <laughs> There you go. I'll throw that back I don't there. know, man. I don't know. Um, um, you know, the thing is, uh, and I said this to a chap that I spoke to once on Friday. Uh, we went to go and have a look at his, his 105 GTV as well that he wants to build. But we approach all of our builds as if they're our own cars. So some of them are our own cars, but, um, but the, the entire time, it's not a, it's not a no cost compromise. I, I don't have golf clients who've got 390,000 pounds to spend on a car. Um, or just an unlimited amount of spend on a car. So the entire time we're building one of these things, we're keeping an eye on trying to achieve what they want, um, trying, to, trying to build the car specifically for them. Um, if they want a, a tour of some sort or a fast road car, stage three suspension, we can build that. If they want an all-out balls out track car, I suppose we could build that too, not that we have ever built something completely like that. We can, we can customize and do what we want with the interior because we've got our own trim shop. Um, and, um, and, and we're in the heart of car country, being where we are, you know, of the UK specifically. But, um, but um, you know, um, we, we keep an eye on the budget. Um, we are I'm very mindful of the fact that, um, that these cars still cost a lot of money. There has to be, to some degree, a non-overcapitalization on, on what they spend. Um, we don't want to just go crazy and say, well, here's your car. It's now worth 50 grand. And by the way, here's a, here's an invoice for 390 grand. Um, cause that just doesn't work. And, uh, and, and I think, I think well, what some of our customers have enjoyed, um, specifically, I think, I think Faisal has with his little orange, um, ST behind us is he's, he likes to be involved in the whole process. Um, you know, there's a lot of input. I speak to him most days, um, sometimes two or three, four times a day, and we can video call and stuff. And uh, and I enjoy that too. I enjoy that customer interaction. I enjoy, I enjoy watching him enjoy it too, because maybe I still associate a bit more with as a customer than as a, a garage manager owner type thing. Um, um, I um, I remember the process of building my own cars and uh, and uh, wanting to be involved and pestering these guys all the time and been down to the workshop and it was an advanced motorsport for example or, or rs fabrications or or um oh gee normandals you know i'd be in there every couple of days going so how's it looking man you know how this <laughs> or whatever. and uh, and so so i enjoy that and and i the fact that the customers are enjoying it too is something that i, I quite like and uh, and and i have to say it's pretty humbling to see the people all over the world you know we, we've got our, our little work t-shirts and then and then people end up buying it and, uh, and I'm posting these things out to Australia or somewhere in Georgia and there was a chap near Atlanta in Georgia and he's buying our t-shirt you think Jesus that's weird you know it's great to hear that you still have that passion that you've you've had since being a customer and you've employed that with your with your 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 base your customer base as well you know and yeah well I think so I mean I think maybe what me not being on the tools allows us to do is that I can do the chits and chats and things. You know, when, when people come in, I can talk to them, um, show them around. And I'm always happy to do that. And people do pop in, which is kind of cool. Um, and, um, and uh, well, I can, I can hold people's hands and find out about stuff and, and take them through the whole process. And me not being on the tools, if, you know, if I put the spanners down because somebody's walked in and wants to have a look around, we're no longer working, but, in, in this workshop that, that continues because there's still people in the trim room. There's still people in the workshop and uh, we're still going great guns. So, uh, so that's kind of cool. So, so maybe, maybe that business plan allows that to happen. Yeah. So it's a, it's a great plan as well. Um, so if I was to bring my air cooled 911, let's say I had like a 993 for instance, mm. and uh, I brought it into you with, you know, I, I would like to, to have a, the design principles that OSHA design have um, placed on this vehicle. What's the process? What do we talk about? How do we go through it? Well, for an OSHA car, uh, and we learned this sort of the hard way on Ollie's car a little bit, we, we bought the shell already painted and I was, I was assured 150% that it was concourse and would be better than any shell we've ever had. And this thing arrived and it wasn't up to spec. It wasn't what I wanted. Um, and it gave me tons of bloody sleepless nights. And then I've subsequently agreed with Ollie that uh, what we'll do is we'll finish building the car. He'll run it for six months or 12 months and then we'll repaint it at our cost because um, there's no way I'm having a car with an Osher badge coming out of workshop 77, looking like that 
that crinkled cut piece of shit that's over there. So, um, <laughs> you know, and it's a, it's a fantastic car, but it just, you know, the paintwork, the bodywork is the first thing that people pick up on. And everybody's a critic, aren't they? You know, uh, they can see a photo, a low res photo over the internet from 3000 miles away and go, oh, look at the gaps or whatever. And um, so I don't particularly want that. So, so we know now that when it's an Osher car, it goes back to bare metal. And we then um, do what the customer wants as well, but we try and put a bit of a guiding hand in there and, and talk about what we want. But for me, it has to be a clean and fast car, I suppose, um, ideally. Um, but it is to a high standard. Um, and we will put in there everything we think is important. Um, mindful, obviously, once again, of the budget, but also also try and, you know, and, and very mindful of what the customer is looking for and the customer wants. You know, every one of these has been different. It makes pricing these things very difficult because I had a couple of chaps up from Surrey a few weeks ago, a few months ago now, and they said, how much is it one of our kits? What does the car cost? And I said, well, it doesn't work that way because um, we don't have a kit. We're not like Singer, you know, for whatever you think of Singer and how great they are. And I think their cars are fantastic. It is fundamentally a kit because you can choose what color you want uh, on the exterior. You can choose what color you want on the interior. You've got a choice of probably two or three seats that Stefan and GTS can make. Um, you got a choice of two different radios and you got a choice of two different tire sizes. You can go for a 265 or a 275 on the rear. And that is fundamentally it. 3.8 or 4 litre, but of course it's the 4 litre is a no-brainer. You get anything to build that. But, um, you know, that's that's all there is. You can't you can't tweak the shape or the arches or the, or the you know, obviously there's, there is more to it than those few options. But, but it is a bit of a kit car really it's it is their kit um it's their design mm. and uh and ours are you know every single one of them is completely different um ollie's gtv is a 2000 but it's got a number of 1750 parts in there so it's got a 1750 dashboard which just looks so much cooler because it's just got the twin binnacles with a slight yeah that just face in at you uh so we've got that and we've we've done a number of deletes and uh Sometimes we do it without the customer wanting it. Um, you know, Dave starts his car off, or he dropped his 83, his three litre tiger off, and uh, we retrimmed it and we gave it back without the central console for his tapes. And he said, Where are my tapes going to go? And we said, We don't care. Mate. But we're, not putting, <laughs> we're not putting that central console back in there. It looks shit. It, essentially, it's kind of a collaborative process where you, okay, where you have the final say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I really suppose. Cool. People have invested in you enough to want to go, yeah, do you know what? Fine, you're right. I'll go with what you say. And, and it works out in you. And you've, I, I doubt you've had any sort of bite back saying, no, I really want my tapes back in here now, you know. Yeah, no, I know. I think we do. I think we probably would. You know, there's a couple of things on our, on, on Faisal's car, Project Pumpkin. I thought, man, that's just not going to fly. That's not, but, but, you know, he wants it. So, so that's cool. And, uh, and that's what he wants to do. So, so that's fine. That's, um, you know, I, I will give him my opinion, but uh, but, <laughs> but but I have to say, and, and in certain circumstances, actually, that happened with the uh, with the Triumph Bobber that I built. Um, oh. The customer bought it, and he said he wanted to paint it all black, and it was this raw aluminium, and it looked cool, and this raw aluminium uh, tank uh, that Ollie from Aluminium had, had modified for us, and mm -hmm. and he said he wanted everything murdered out, painted black, and I thought that is the shittest idea I've ever heard. Well, it, it improved that bike probably fifty percent. Um, all black just looked so mean; it looked really good. So, uh, so you know, customers not always wrong. Yeah, okay, I get that. That's cool. Yeah. Um, okay, so this gives us an opportunity now to can we can we kind of have a look around the yeah the workshop? Me, uh, Show us around. Uh, let me see how I can do this. That's it. You press that button, and then you. Uh, there oh, we, we are. There we go. Oh, look at that. So um, so yeah, I suppose. Well, this is this is the uh, this is the view from the desk. Um, yeah, that's on eleven T. Yeah, so that's a, that's a 911T. That's in for an engine. That's actually the chap who bought the bike, um, who I thought had made a made a bum call, but uh, he hadn't. Um, and um, and then we got a couple of other things. So so we're actually we're a little we're a little Porsche heavy. We tend to have a bit of a rivalry between being Porsches and Mercs. But um, so that's zero five. That was the uh, that was the one that was on the cover of um, Aubergine. That's a Porsche. Yeah, that's the Aubergine car. Yeah, yeah. So that was and that that's a hot rod. That's got uh, quite a few little hot rod things to it. Um, you know, the wheels are a square set of wheels and, uh, car came to us as Tangerine, 1973 Tangerine car. And, um, and, uh, turned out really nicely. I think I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. We, we took a lot of stuff out of it that I didn't think it needed, but we kept all of the, um, all the stuff in there that I thought it did need. Um, 
and we've operated the suspension. So it's it's a V3 suspension all round, which hadn't been done in a G series car. Uh, sorry, uh, in an F series car before. F series, uh, yeah. We, we, we took G series. We took G series suspension, um, V3 suspension, and put it in there. Um, it's now available off the shelf, but uh, but that took some modification. Um, it was a, a. I mean, you would have seen this maybe in magazines or whatever. But um, but anyway, I, I don't want to carry on too much about that one. If you if everybody knows all about it. But it's, um, it's an opportunity now. There's going to be some people that may not know your work, and when they're watching this on YouTube um, in the next couple of weeks, it's, it's worth like delving into a little bit more. But yeah, you know. yeah, please. Yeah, cool. Uh, what do we got next to that? We got uh, Faisal's Project Pumpkin. A That's little, awesome. That's a little, so, so it's a little ST replica, but um, but it's a 1971 car, and yeah. um, you know we we spent a lot of time sort of talking about what he wanted with this car. Um, and what he was hoping to try and achieve. Actually, I've got to say, now that we put those rear wheels on, it does look pretty badass, doesn't it? Oh, that's perfect. That stance is, is pure ST and pure right, man. It is. I love it. It is. It is. Um, this is unique because it's going to have uh, FIHT. Uh, it's got the historical technical passport coming, um, which we're, we're waiting for the inspections to open up and again. Um, but um, a couple of things we did, which Pfizer wanted, things like the, uh, the slots in the bumper, Normally for the oil coolers, we've got them running both sides, but um, it does prove to be slightly problematic because this is a G period car for the FIA, for the, for the HTP. So, uh, so that, that's up to and including 1971. So there are certain things that cars weren't campaigning with in those years, and we're going to have mm. to try and, try and uh, get them through somehow so that it gets that passport. But, um, but it's a lovely car. The arch is really cool. The best part about this, actually, I suppose, is the uh, is the motor. Um, What's in the back? Is, yeah, let's have a look. So it's a two point five twin slug. So just like an ST, it's brilliant. Two, yeah, two yeah, and a half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, which actually, I got to say, is more like the um, the motors from um, from. Uh, let me see, I'm just struggling with this bloody thing here a little. Um, it's more like the nineteen seventy two motors, but we have been able to prove that there was a two point five. Um, twin plug motor running in a 1971 car so this actually gets through but um yeah quite a cool little thing and we've got the uh, the original motors over here it's on the stand so um so we have the original matching numbers motor well we don't Faisal does um but um yeah awesome. so uh it's a little bit of little bit of stuff on the inside and uh, you probably won't be able to see very much but anyway square weave in there and a number of little changes and things that happen but um roll cable great seats and then uh, yeah actually those are diesel seats so those are uh, those uh, Faisal had made in Italy, and then we've done similar stuff in the back here. Yeah. So we just try to pick up on a little bit. But um, yeah, beautiful. It's a it's a perfect car. I love the STS one of my favorites. I love the arches. I think as far as long noses go, it's probably the most aggressive long nose car Porsche made fundamentally. Yeah, yeah, I would say so. I'd say so. Yeah, pretty cool. Um, Ollie's little Alpha. So this is also, this is just going to be phenomenal. Um, this is uh, 805 kilograms wet. <laughs> About 195, I would suggest, you know, this is, this is what we've sort of aiming for, 195 brake horsepower. Um, and, um, and just badass. I just can't wait to get it in there. Um, but it's been, like I said, you know, terribly problematic. So little things like, you know, these, these little, uh, sorry, where is it there? These little hinges, um, the little clips on the inside. There's a lot of stainless steel on this car that you just don't realize. Mm. And, uh, and then we've trimmed it all out. And then, you know, so it's got the, it's got various things in here. But, um, oh, it's gorgeous. Where has it gone? Let's see the yeah, dash. So, oh, yeah, 1750, the, yeah. With, uh, yeah. And then, and then it would have had the big central console coming down, which we've, which we've done away with. So um, we put all the gauges up where the radio would have been, and there's he's got a little Bluetooth set up underneath there. But uh, yeah, still a lot of work, um, a lot of work just you know modifying the bloody glove box even, and uh, yeah, real pain in the ass. But anyway, we've got that. But it's the details that make the car really, don't they? Yeah, 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 they do. Mm. Dan's new daily, so he's just been bagging this. And look at that, that's one sick ride, man. <laughs> that's nice. But uh, lower W124, it's wicked, wicked. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, shop truck. So we're working on this. This is the new project that we're doing. So there's 1938 Ford pickup. And, and, you know, I know this is away from the Porsche stuff that you normally have, but... Um, I but, love it, man. Uh, all cars you know, we got, I have a real thing for. We've got to try and build something a little bit different. This is, this is the daily. The whole reason for me buying this initially was that one of the dads at the um, nursery where my kid goes, 
is a uh, the rugby conditioning coach for Northampton Saints, and I think all the girls love him. So um, I, thought, I thought, fuck that man. There's no way I'm going to let that son of a bitch be the coolest dad there. When I pitch up here in my in my 302 with uh, with a, with an engine out of a 1971 Torino, looking as it does, screw him. I win. What was the size of the Torino engine? It wasn't a three... Oh. Yeah, yeah, 302. 351. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My yeah, four so knowledge isn't that bad. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's a five litre. And, yeah. um, and that's the final paint finish. So uh, that's what we're going for. Um, so it's, it's been clear-coated and uh, lacquer and matte. So oh. that was what it looked like originally, and now we've sort of got it down to this. And, uh, and I, think, I think it's just, you know, 82 years of patina. It's going to look pretty badass. It's going to look wicked. Yeah, ah, on the other two. side, this is yeah zero two. This is um this uh, this needs some running, man. We need to, we need to get some miles under the belt on this thing. But um, mm. but um yeah, and it's done. It's done about seven thousand miles or so now. No, maybe <laughs> not five thousand miles, but uh, and some of it pretty hard miles. Such a brilliant car. The wheels I loved. I, I just love the start oh, yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it just sits so well. Like I said, it's almost a oops. A caricature, if that makes sense, you know, um, but but not in a bad way. It's it's just like it's it's aggressive. It's come straight from the the notepad into reality. It's a wicked car, man. Wicked oh, thanks, car. man. Thank you very much. Yeah, well, it, that, that also, you know, there was a lot of engineering as well on the front. Um, we took um, I took the the top mounts from a G series uh, 1989 Carrera and put them in there, um, and that's um, so it allowed me it allowed me the adjustability on the V3s that we've got. Uh, but, but I mean, so much on this car was customized, you know, the fact that the front wings are all, they're, 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 uh, fiber. Um, and, um, so right. I try and modify yeah. that because, because these horn wheels, they need a lot of modification because it wouldn't have had these horn wheels. So they went in there and then the arches are turbo arches, but they've been tweaked ever so slightly. So a little bit wider. Um, um, and they had to be placed where they were. Oh yeah. A couple of things that I did because I had a 550 replica spider. Uh, a Martin and Walker with the central filler. I thought I'd better do that as well. So yeah. not all of it was was um, was function over form. Some of it was form over function. Um, but then with the oil filler down on the side, because the 993 motor, the, the 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 actual oil tank is literally underneath the Archer. So to fill it up, you can see the distance between the back of the engine to there. Jesus, and, yeah, yeah. I'd have to put a bit of oil into a tube and then blow it into the tank. And uh, you only have to do that a couple of times to think, Paul, so this, I'm never doing that again. So, um, so <laughs> okay, yeah. Okay, so I can't, come, I can't ask you to do that in my next car then, no? Oh, no, no. I mean, you can do it in any car, but it was the reason I did that. You know, so, so for me, that is function. Um, and, uh, and the roll cage was in there really to try and stiffen the car a little because without, whoops, sorry, without the, um, without the, uh, without the rain gutters on here, we lost a bit of strength and, and it started to flex. And we were getting a bit of flex and bend off there. So, uh, so I thought, well, actually, we'll, we'll end up putting the roll cage in and that'll, that'll try and straighten it all up again. 17-inch yeah. wheels, which are arguably, I suppose, a little big. Um, I've got criticisms about that and people have criticized that. Uh, but um, People will criticize anything, man. So yeah, they whatever. Do, but, yeah, they do. And, and, you know, sometimes I do look at it. And when I compare it to the pureness of, of 05, the aubergine car, when they're parked next to each other, and that's just so 1970s porn star and so sort of tucked in nice and tight, I do think, wow, those 15s on there look cool. But I've got a better chance, tire choice with these 17s. And, and, of course, it sticks to the road. And when you've got 330 brake horsepower, the car only weighs 980 kilograms. It's... um. It's pretty important to be able to get a bit of grip onto the ground there, and uh, you know, so so yeah, it, it serves a purpose. It serves a purpose. Perfect. That's a wicked. It's yeah. it's a lovely venue as well, lovely um, area to work in. You know, it just doesn't feel yeah, like a typical yeah. workshop. Well, it's not. You know, for me, that is the thing. You know, we've got uh, yeah, we can have our little stuff up. We got a little, you know, the uh, the the gear knobs that we've had made. I've just had a couple of different ones made, so the black, so the nine nine seventeen style thing, and then and then the recycled skateboards. Um, we've got a couple more in here, but, um, yeah, it's, uh, it, it, it is, you know, I've got artwork on the walls by, by friends of ours. Uh, that's Andy Bolton from Iconic Drive did that. Um, oh, okay. Chris at Gas <laughs> Coffee, he gave me the, uh, the, the constantly leaking bloody oil tank. Chris, <laughs> uh, I will have to invoice you for the blue roll we're using, but actually it looks cool. <laughs> so, you know, there's, uh, yeah, there's, there's a lot of stuff and, and I enjoy that. I enjoy the fact that, um, I enjoy the fact that other people have been involved in um in this place and uh yeah there's a there's one of pete's prints up there and more iconic designs zero two it's very uh, cool man oh it's yeah, very yeah, cool. yeah yeah where have, I, where have i gone 
Yeah. Um, and um, we'll let you. I've got a couple more over here as well. Uh, <laughs> I haven't even been able. Uh, Dean, uh, Dean Angram, friend, and Erica gave me a painting the other day. But this is from. It's from uh, RWB and. Ah uh, uh, yeah, the dude who yeah. does the drawings for RWB from Poland is amazing. Is He's got a real eye for like old school anime and manga, and he does that stuff like really yeah, well, bob that's, on. Yeah, that's, that's who gave it to us. Yeah, yeah. He was he was trying to do a bit of money raising for for one of their one of their employees' kids had uh, had needed an operation for his eyes, and uh, we ended up mm. buying the t-shirt. But um, and then Grease and Grain, a couple of pictures of hers and Alex McKenzie's over there as well. And there's you know I've got both the cars doing the three quarters. But um, yeah, that's kind of what I like. I like the fact that uh, that other people have been involved with um with um with what we got going on here. Yeah, it's brilliant, man. It's, it's a, it's a fantastic site that you have and it's a, uh, a great business. You know, it, it grabs a lot of people's attention. There's an awful lot of positivity from people, uh, even in the comments. Uh, I, do you know what? I'm going to take this as an opportunity to start some of the Q and A stuff from other people. Here we go. Uh, where's the market going, uh, with regards to nine, four, four values. Oh, I, I don't, I, yeah, yeah, because he has a nine four four. He was asking exactly. me the other day. Yeah, we recently, and in fact, I didn't get down to the bottom there because I noticed the signal was dropping. But we've got uh, Craig Abbott's little nine four four in um, in Hell Bronze, um, which we sold to him a little while ago. What uh, color? I I don't know. Um, yeah, yeah, it's a cool color. I don't know um, really where any of it's going specifically with regards to this COVID thing, man. You know, um, there are a lot of people guessing. I suppose on fundamentals, I would think probably down because you know there's going to be a lot of unemployment and because gdp is shrinking and because mm -hmm. it's global um i think the general thoughts are that it will recover quickly because this this recession isn't financially driven it'll be pandemic driven so hopefully the recovery is quick so even though we're talking about 30 odd percent retractual or contractions or 20 percent contractions which is just huge when you consider that the uh, uh, 2008 um, um, subprime was only about an eight percent contraction. You know, mm -hmm. you're looking at your 16s and 20s is just massive. But um, I think the thoughts are that uh, 12 months down the line will probably be three or four percent down only. So, so that'll help. But, but you know, people need to get out of these things. Maybe they are toys. Uh, they're non-essential. They are nice to have. So, so you know, fingers crossed it all stays and maintains some sort of even keel. Um, but there will be some knee-jerk reaction. I see a lot of cars being advertised on, on Facebook. Having said that, though, I'm desperately searching for a, a 964 C2, right-hand drive, manual, coupe, and I can't find one. So uh, Maybe, maybe we've we got to wait a few more weeks, you know. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, in all fairness, you know, I think that, that the, the prices will probably drop down. It won't be drastic. It won't, it won't, I don't think the idea of a 10 or 15 grand 964 is, is far beyond our reach now. It's that, that time's gone. I would but so. then Not for they may, yeah, of course, but it may reduce down to a point where it's like, I, 40 I grand. could. Yeah. yeah. And, and you know, that's, that's kind of agreeable. It's a bit the way the direction 993s have been going. Mm. Um, you know, they, they've kind of stopped increasing. If anything, I've, I've seen prices decrease, you know, I'm, I'm keeping my eye on that for some reason now as well. So, but yeah, yeah. cool. Okay. I think there was a couple of agreeances with the wheels uh, about zero two. And I know a lot of people, and I suppose this is a good point to sort of raise at this time. There's a lot of people that have opinions on what a 911 should have and what shouldn't have. There's a yeah, lot of sure. people that don't like the gutter gutters removed, um, mm -hmm. which to be fair, I, I see what they're saying, but at the same time, aesthetically, it just looks smoother. It makes that, yeah, that whole true. car look more bubble, you know, more yeah. softer. Might not work well in the rain, but uh, I'm not driving into the rain with the windows open. Who cares? Exactly. You've Here's taken away that. But that's what I like about Porsche, the Porsche community. You know, it wasn't what I said earlier, but but um, everything is, is, is acceptable in Porsche. Ferrari, it kind of has to be red. It kind of has to be mint. It kind of has to be not used and so low mileage. And, um, and uh, it's got to be completely stock. But mm. literally anything goes with Porsche. You know, this could be a rusty old piece of shit slammed down into the ground with um, with terrible wheels. And somebody out there is like, hey, man, cool. I dig your rat rod style 911, you know, so so that kind of works. But it could be raised up right on maximum travel height on the suspension, um, completely stock, low mileage, three liter standard thing. And, and somebody out there is going, that's perfect. That's just the way I want the car, you know, completely untouched. Um, and everything in between is acceptable. You can hot rod the hell out of them um, and you can leave them completely stock and they can be rust buckets. There's a VW type scene, rat roddy thing, and they're perfectly cool. And that's what I like about 911. So, so yeah, some people won't like the wheels, but guaranteed 
there'll be a bunch of people out there who go actually 17 inches makes sense and they look cool and i like them big and i like them stancy so yeah cool oh someone i think someone's trying to make a comment about some wheels for me but raise engineering te 37s on a 911 yes or no i don't know what they are what are <laughs> They're like these five spoke wheels that uh, they don't go all the way to the edge of the rim. They're very much a Japanese inspired wheel. You probably see JDM it on a, wheel. Okay. very much a JDM wheel. You see it on a skyline. Do you know, I like I, what the Japanese do with 911s is actually pretty cool. And I saw that originally. Jeremy, from who was Advanced Motorsport then, was very instrumental in helping me with some of the design on my on Zero Two. And... Um, and he was showing me a lot of the Japanese stuff because he lived in Japan. Uh, he's the only French guy living in Weeden who speaks perfectly fluent Japanese, which is bizarre. And he speaks perfectly fluent car. So that's kind of cool too. That's awesome. But, um, yeah. But um, yeah, so he was showing me a lot of what the Japanese scene was doing with 911s and RWB, you know, what, what came out of there. With and, uh, and yeah, man, some badass stuff. So uh, I, I need to check out Ray's T37s and have a look. One last question. <laughs> yes. Um, oh, here we go. RB or 2JZ uh, for banter, Dave. And that's from Jack Half Blind. Uh, Jack, <laughs> Jack. Whatever, Jack. I'm surprised he didn't recommend a K20. <laughs> he's, the only, he's the only dude who tries the K20 swap anything. Anything. So. There was that yeah. K20 swapped uh, 911 in America, the, uh, the K24 with the turbo. Did you see that? I was, no, no. No, I didn't see it. <laughs> oh, my God, man. Uh, okay. It, it was, it was really, good. Really I, I thought bad. it was great. Um, it, yeah. it actually looked uh, looked looked, prop, uh, looked proper, um, but uh, probably that, at least <laughs> probably, reliable. So, I don't know. It was a lot more reliable than the the flat six L's in it, I, I, I presume. But no, I think the engine had broken, and they decided to throw that in there. But um, David, I just wanted to say thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it, man. Um, oh, thanks, dude. I hope it I hope it went okay. You know, so after the, I can't believe it's an hour this up, and uh, and I hope I got got to sort of show you around and didn't waffle too much and talk shit. So no, no, it was perfect. I'm the one who normally chats shit anyway. So thank you very much for taking some of that away from me. But you do think I did talk shit? Okay. <laughs> But take it and leave it, man. I, you know, if you take that as a, as a slight against you, then fine, whatever. <laughs> no, listen, much thank love, you very man. much, man. I really appreciate the invitation to be on here, and uh, it's really cool. So uh, thanks for popping my live virginity. Hey, there you go. So uh, now you're just going to be doing loads of these, and it's going to be like, oh, for yeah. fuck's sake, it's him again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Take care, man. All the best. Cool, man. Thanks, guys. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.